The Rum Shack is a festival venue at the mothership of all festivals, Glastonbury, in the southeast corner, which is the late night area where all the fun stuff happens after hours. It was never a destination venue, it was never meant to be, but that's what's happened. For me, the concept always starts with the music and then goes to the ambience and how many people you're expecting in there. I wanted it to be varying uh, genres of music, so not strictly one thing. I planned on having blues and soul and funk and hip hop and you know reggae and whatever, all genres of music. When I then sat down with Adam Neville, who's designed the whole thing, um, because it's rum, Adam came up with a, a kind of a board of of different styles of Cuban, Latin American, uh, you know Mexican style uh, buildings. And we settled on this kind of Cuban-esque kind of old you know, building that's kind of run down. I design and my team built the Rum Shack. I think back in the day it was just a tent with a stage and a band in it. And increasingly that's become more decorated. Now there's a lot of venues which have a scaffolding structure in the front of them, which is decorated to make it look like a building or, you know, like an aeroplane or something. And then once you go inside, it's like a regular setup for a nightclub or a band stage. You've got to work within certain parameters. It's got to be something that's, that can be built off site and brought in, or it's something that you can realistically build on site in two weeks. I know a lot of the guys build stuff on, on site, but I like to build stuff here in the workshop in, a, in small enough components that it can be trucked to site. We've got lots of staff here, we've got lots of workshop space, we've got lots of materials and we've got access to a lot of expertise. So if we have any problems, we can, we can deal with them here rather than trying to deal with them in the field. Well, as far as challenges go, health and safety is a big one. You're putting up a semi-permanent structure that is going to be surrounded by revellers in the dark. You know, it's going to be clamped safely onto the scaffolding. We spend a lot of time thinking about how the stuff's actually built so that it can last. To program a venue, you need to work out the times and then what slots you have available, um, work out how much budget you have to make it happen, uh, how many tickets you have to get artists into the festival, and then it becomes creative by curating the way that acts move into each other, the sound of the night and the general atmosphere that you want to create. Programming at Glastonbury Festival can be really difficult. We have very little budget to make it happen, um, and particularly uh, not enough tickets, which makes it difficult because sometimes, often, we'll have to have bands shared tickets between different venues. So that becomes, even though we want to book a certain artist, um, that's just the start of the puzzle. Seeing the Rum Shack come alive is a really special and profound moment. When the audience enters the space, and often they may not know who they're seeing or what they're about to witness, but the point is they, they come to the Rum Shack because they know that's where the best parties are at. And when you see them jump or shout and hug and hang out with strangers and really kind of have that Glastonbury experience at the Rum Shack, it's a wonderfully profound experience and it feels like we are offering a sense of freedom to people when uh, I have an awareness that there's a lot of people who don't necessarily have that freedom.